Hi everybody, it's Tom from Vehicle Visionary. I probably don't need to tell you, well, maybe I do, based on the logo right there, because it looks a little different. This is a Buick we're going to be taking a look at today, but you know that by the title of the video. It's the all-new 2024 Buick Invista. Starting with the base price, a little over $22,000. There are three trim levels available, including base, the ST, or Sport Touring is what that stands for. That's what this model is or you can step up to the Avenir that has a base price of a little over $29,000. But a very reasonably priced model that really has a very sporty and modern look to it. In fact, some people who I have shown this to so far today told me initially they thought it was an EV based on the way the front end looks. It does have a sport back design and a very nice look overall. So we're gonna dig into this model and see if you get the right features for the right price. And for once, I think we're probably going to have quite a few comments saying, wow, the price actually does match what you get because you have a lot of impressive technology within the interior, a lot of great driving aids, Let's dig in and see exactly what this new Invista is all about. The exterior color on this model is copper ice metallic. And you'll see the daytime running lights working in conjunction with the turn signals or blinkers up here. I know some of you do and don't know what that's all about. In fact, I see that I forgot to remove something earlier off of the front end here. This is fresh off the truck, literally. I just had to wash it myself. But you can see what that looks like, a very aggressive look that almost gives it an in-motion look. The headlights will be located down here on the lower portion of the front end. And a little bit of a gloss black with some chrome here. So depending on who you are, you might like that, might not. It would be nice to maybe see some options where that's concerned. But the design of the grill definitely looks nice. I was showing this to some friends earlier they thought it was an EV just by the shape of the front end. You can see that ST logo there or Sport Touring logo. And one thing that you do want to know about this, but keep in mind, at this price point, probably to be expected, but still not a big deal, I think, for most people. Only available in front wheel drive. So if that's what you're looking for, no problem, you're good. All wheel drive, not an option here, but I don't think that's gonna be an issue for the average person who would buy this particular model. You do have the gloss black mirror caps, turn signal indicators are built in, and these are heated power adjustable and manually folding. I like to show that because I said one time in a video that some mirrors were manually folding and someone actually asked me why I didn't demonstrate that. Do I really need to? Yes, it's okay to laugh. Here is the remote. There's that new Tri-Shield Buick logo right there. As you can see, it does have remote start for a decent amount south of $30,000. A little bit of chrome surround here just to kind of dress things up. The thing I really like here is the roof line. It has a sport back, kind of a coupe look. You're gonna have the body colored shark fin antenna up there. And one thing you'll notice is missing back here is a rear window wiper. And you might wonder, why is that? Well, with the slope of the, or angle of the rear window, supposedly, it's something that's not necessarily even needed. So not really a big deal, I don't think, where that's concerned. Just have to tell me, for those of you down the road when you've had one for a while, what you think about it. So you will finish things off here with the LED tail lights. A very nice look, you can see the turn signals or add the hazard lights on down there as far as that goes. But a very clean look back here. Again, that nice newly redesigned Tri-Shield Buick logo. You have the Buick logo down there in name, in Vista, and the trim level ST right here. So, some of you might be wondering, what's under the hood? Well, if you're looking to save money and get some decent gas mileage, what's under the hood might be a good thing. Under the hood is the 1.2 liter three cylinder. It makes 137 horsepower and 162 pounds feet of torque. And you might expect a CVT. And in this case, the six speed automatic transmission is the only option, which I think is a good thing. How about MPGs? 28 city, 32 highway, 30 combined, and 3.3 gallons of gas is what Buick says you should use for every 100 miles driven. When it comes to gaining access to the cargo area, 
you have a hands-free power lift gate. 20.7 up to 42 cubic feet of cargo capacity. And to maximize your cargo capacity, you're going to come right here and just pull on the release right there and you can lower the seats. This is a 60-40 split. I will go and do both sides just because I know some people like to see both sides lowered down. So we will appease everybody where that's concerned. And you can see that while it's not completely flat, it also doesn't have a real sharp angle to it. So it's help, helpful to maximizing cargo space. Obviously, the cargo cover right here is removable. You just take this little section off right here, kind of hard to do one-handed, and then literally it pops out of place. So that's pretty easy to deal with as far as that goes. And you do have a reasonable amount of space back here, a little bit on the side right there. And the floor actually kind of drops a little bit from the shut line here or the area where the tailgate or lift gate closes down and latches to. So that helps to increase a little bit of space. And good news here, no tire repair kit because you have a spare tire. That's a good thing. And let's see, there we go. You can actually put the floor in place like that. That way, when it comes to getting the tire, that spare tire out, if you need to, and you're doing it by yourself, you don't have to worry about messing with the floor or taking it out or whatever the case is. So that's helpful. I think that's a good thing. I don't know if I can get that back in place one-handed, but apparently I can. And you do have one light back here as far as that goes. And one thing I do want to show, I'm gonna push the button to close this power lift gate. If you ever come back here and you push the button or you push the button on the remote or even on the door and it doesn't open, well, it'll be a lot more obvious if you're trying to use this button to open it. But here's what you need to do, come right here. Because you have settings, you have max, you have three fourths, or it could be set to off. And obviously when it's set to off, you can't use the power function to open that. You can still open it manually. So if the battery were to die or something like that, you can still do that. Now, let's take a quick look into the interior and we'll start by talking about the color. It's going to be ebony with Santorini blue. You can see the blue contrast stitching right there, but probably can see it a little bit better right here. You're going to have piping on the front seats that's a little more prominent. So for those of you who like something that stands out, well, there you go. You can definitely see that a lot better as far as that goes. The ST logo, which honestly, I don't know why that wasn't done in Santorini blue, but then again, someone else might have a different preference and say, no, I really like the way that Buick did that. I think that's more appropriate. Tell me what you think about that. You will find the armrest right here. Let's see, is it comfortable? Yeah, it seems to be pretty comfortable. You put your arm up there, that really gives you a good idea. A little bit of space within the door bins, and you're going to have the singular rear seat pocket over there on the passenger side. And let's hop inside. Now, one thing, I didn't have the camera ready to go earlier when we did this, but a friend of mine hopped back here who is six foot two and he had a few inches above his head. So there's actually a lot of head space back here. Kind of surprising, but that's the way it is. Now you won't find air conditioning vents, but you will find USB connectivity options too right there. A little bit of space within this area. And no sunroof in this particular case, in my personal opinion, not a big deal because I'm not a big fan of sunroofs, but some of you might be. And we'll move on to the front seat area, looking through the passenger side door, a little bit larger door bin, a little larger armrest right here. You can see again that blue Santa or Santorini blue. Let's get that correctly stated in the order. It's Santorini blue, but you can see the contrast stitching right there, a little bit more design as far as what we have here on the front doors. Now on the passenger side, you have a manually adjustable seat. On the driver's side, it is power adjustable and a very, well, what I think is tastefully done interior. It has a nice look to it, a little bit unique. It doesn't look typical to a lot of other vehicles out there on the road. In fact, if I showed you what is called the virtual cockpit, the large screen that goes all the way across a total of 19 inches, it's going to be eight inches for the instrument cluster and over here on this side with the infotainment screen it's going to be 11 inches so a very nice look if i showed that to you and you didn't know what you were looking at you might think it was a bmw or something like that we do have a glove box right here nothing unusual but just to show you what's there as far as the space goes but check this out 
You do have more connectivity, as you can see right here with the USB and the 12 volt options and a wireless charging pad. And for those of you who are not fans of push button shifters, well, Buick has you covered because you have a conventional style shifter right here. You're also going to have your cup holders. There is some gloss black in a few areas within the interior or piano black, as some of you like to call it. And then a little bit of space within the front area of the center console. And we're also going to have the lid. And it's actually at a decent height that makes it very comfortable for an armrest. So that's a good thing. When you look inside, there is more space and quite a bit going on here. I think this Invista has a lot going for it. But you being most likely to drive this model, if you're watching this video, if you're thinking about buying one, you probably want to know what it's like in the passenger seat or excuse me, the driver's seat. Let's hop over there and I'll keep from getting confused in what I say and I'll show you what's there. And we took a little bit of a look at the driver's side door earlier, so you pretty much know what is here. All of the typical and conventional buttons and switches and all that good stuff. Here's where you're gonna control the functionality of your headlights. And we will close the door here and hit our push button start, which is gonna be located in a typical position. But you can see what the virtual cockpit looks like. A very nice look here, very modern as far as the instrument cluster goes. I, the driver's display, if you want to call it that. A lot going on here that really makes it look modern. If I just showed you the screen, you might think it was maybe a BMW or a Mercedes-Benz or something like that because, well, it looks that modern. Now, what's interesting here is the shape of the steering wheel. While you have the round top, you have a little bit of a flat bottom down here. Really just more for looks than anything else in high-performance vehicles that are low to the ground a lot of the time. That's there to make it easier to get in and out. But in this case, it just adds a little bit of sportiness to it. You can see your steering wheel mounted controls, the Tri-Shield Buick logo. A lot of people still not completely aware of that change. So they might see that and wonder, well, what exactly is that? So now you know you can tell them when they're out in the parking lot scratching their heads and speaking of scratching their heads, I know a lot of you scratch your heads as to what exactly this lever is for. Do you notice that? See that arrow blinking to the right? Now I push it into the down position and it's blinking to the left. That has to do with those blinkers or turn signals I told you about earlier in the video that lets people around you know what your intentions are when you're driving. I know that's a crazy thing to do. It's unusual and unorthodox, but it is an option for you. So you're going to have other things I can't say anything sarcastic about. There's your knob for controlling the volume and turning the radio on and off. And also we have the control here for your front windshield wipers. Well, there's only one windshield and it's only in the front, but you don't have a rear window wiper is why I said that. So you only have the windshield wiper functionality here. It's the only wipers on the vehicle and a very nice modern look with the infotainment screen and i don't know how well you can see it with this view but it does have a curve to it everything here is really angled just a little bit but it's angled towards the driver so a very driver focused vehicle that's always a good thing and so you can go in and make a lot of changes you can go into settings and you can see what's there you have apple carplay and android auto so obviously you can connect you have system right here as far as different things you can go in and look at and change and all that good stuff. With vehicle, let's go over here and you can see teen driver mode. You have the rear seat reminder and notice where I have my hand positioned right here. That's why you have this section right here. It just makes it easier to relax your hand right there and, and do what you need to do. You can turn rear seat reminder off the climate and air quality. If you want to go in and look at that, you can do that. I don't know how many of you have seen that before but you can actually go in some of these vehicles and actually see what is going on where that's concerned. Comfort and convenience, lighting. There's a lot going on here with the vehicle. You also have your collision detection systems as far as safety features go, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking. I'm not gonna cover every single little thing that's here because, well, it would take too long. There is a lot going on here. And I'll go into reverse so you can see the rear view camera. Only one camera view, but it is there. Pretty clear, I think it will definitely get the job done. You have the trajectory lines. If you want to turn those off, obviously you can do that depending on your personal preferences. And then down here, we do have our air conditioning vents and the controls. It is single zone climate control, but in an interior of this size, I don't think that is all that big of a deal. 
You even have heated seats. Now, personally, living here in Northwest Louisiana, I would much rather see ventilated seats, maybe ventilated and heated. But in this case, you just have the heated seats. But that way, you know what's here. There is a lot for the money. Okay, we're gonna get out on the road for a quick test drive because there are people at the dealership who want to take a look at this model. So you know what? That gives me a good reason to step on the pedal just a little bit and tell you how it does. Wow, that actually is pretty impressive. Wow, not bad. It's not neck snapping performance. It's not meant to be. A Little bit of body roll. I'm cruising through the corner pretty good there. I'm trying to get back as fast as I can. But I'll tell you what, when you need to get up and go, it gets up and goes. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed with that. The ride quality seems to be good. It's not a Cadillac, but it's also not a tank. So a really nice experience. And the back window, as with that sloped line to it, the angle of that back window, you might wonder, how hard is it to see out of? For me personally, with where I have the driver's seat set and where the mirror is set, I, it's not a problem. I can see just fine with it. Uh, so no big deal seeing out of the back window. Obviously a pretty easy vehicle to see out of. A lot of fun to drive. It definitely gets down the road with no problem. Uh, that would be the one thing that I think people might be concerned about. But keep in mind, I, I am driving alone. But at the same time, you know, this isn't meant to be the fastest vehicle on the road. It's not a high performance SUV. But at the same time, for only 137 horsepower, I'm pretty impressed. The technology here, as nice and modern as it looks, it's still very easy to learn and very easy to use. Overall, a pretty impressive vehicle to drive, at least based on what it is, I have to say I'm impressed. And I don't think I told you the tire and wheel size earlier, so in case you're curious, 225 on the width. We're gonna have a 55 series sidewall wrapped around the black 18 inch wheels. So tell me what you think. Does the 2024 Buick Invista ST have the right features for the right price? I know this model has gained a lot of attention today just driving around and filming it where I am today at this particular location actually had a lot of people come out and take a look at it. So curious to know what your thoughts are. If you want to know more about this particular model from Morgan Buick GMC, check out the link down in the description of the video. And I have to say a special thanks to my friends at the dealership for loaning me this model for the day, literally getting it right off the truck as soon as it came in. So special thanks also to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't yet subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel, please consider doing so. And if you would like to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.